What's up guys? I ride 705 here. Got a treat for you today. Um, been getting a lot of requests to uh, to videotape my maintenance on my sea dew So today I'm going to do something that uh, you don't see very often. I'm actually going to change the plugs in the sea dew I have a trip planned this weekend. I'm going down to Port Severn. We're going to do the Trent Severn way and we are going to record it. So uh, look forward to that. Um, I wasn't able to get the actual plugs that are meant for the sea dew from Bombardier. Uh, they didn't have them in stock. So I did a cross, re a cross reference and uh, I was able to get some E3 high performance born to burn spark plugs. Um, you know what guys, I'm not a big believer in high performance spark plugs and all these you know, fancy little tips. This thing here has got this weird, I'll show you that after, but it's got a weird tip on it that uh, I don't know, it's supposed to spark better and whatever, perform better, yada yada. You know, the stock NGKs, it runs great. I don't really see the difference uh, between a spark plug to another spark plug, so. Everybody has a different opinion on that. For me, if I'm gonna put the stock plugs back in, I would've. So for that, I'm gonna have to take the top deck off. I'm not gonna record all that. Well, actually I am gonna record it, but I'm gonna put that in fast forward, because you already seen me do that in my other video. So uh, I don't wanna bore you with that whole deal. And then I'll actually go through changing the plugs on the sea dew how to do it, and um, yeah, so there we go. Um, I'm gonna set this up, I don't know where. I'm gonna try to stab it in a, maybe I'm gonna tape it to my railing, that's what I'm gonna do. Right up there. It's not gonna take me too long to take the top deck off, I don't think, that's the plan. I'm actually gonna, uh, I'm gonna stop wash this for you, and uh, I'm gonna just give you a time lapse, it's gonna go quick, and um, just so you guys have an idea of how long it actually takes to take the deck apart once, you, uh, once you've done it a couple times. So I'm going to get this set up. I'm going to get a clock set up and um, we'll go from there. Hey guys, I downloaded a stopwatch. So uh, let's time this. How long is it going to take to uh, take the top deck off? Let's start that. Let's start that. I don't know how to start it. Oh, there we go. <laughs> Alright, I'm just going to put this down here. Boom! That's it guys, all done. Well, let's see how long that took. Yeah, we got eight minutes and four seconds. So it doesn't take too long if uh, you've done it a couple times. I know the deck's not off right now. I'm gonna get the straps on it and just lift it up. Uh, normally you do this with a couple guys. Both pick up the side, away you go. All right guys, uh, we're about ready to take off the caps for the spark plugs themselves. Um, they're right here. One, two, and three. So, I've never done this before, but shouldn't be that complicated. Should be able to pop that puppy out. I'm uh, actually gonna put this down here so I don't lose it. And next one. This one's kinda stuck behind this little doohickey here. I don't think I need to unplug these. I'm pretty sure I can just wiggle them off. Um, probably a two-handed job. I'm gonna try to hold this in my, under my arm here. <laughs> Sorry for the wiggling. Got a pretty firm grip on that thing. I think a little bit of crying can't fix. Yeah, slide that gently under there. And a little lift. Wow, is that ever deep. Okay, maybe we will take these little, uh, little clips off here. There we go. I don't know if you guys can see that, but uh, that's way down there. And they actually have the spark plug cap on it. Um, a lot of people on the websites were saying it don't, they don't need those caps. Maybe that's other sea I guess. 
But uh, that one sure does look like it has a cap from here. Let's unplug these. Again, it didn't take much force at all. I just lifted really gently here and they just pop right out. Um, there should be no order in these, but just for the hell of it, I will keep them in order. Just in case, just in case, but really uh, I can't see a reason why I would. I also notice there's no dielectric grease on the end of these. Which I guess makes sense because it's supposed to seal here. So I will put some dielectric grease on this before I put them back in. Um, even though it is dry, uh, it's just a little extra measure. So now it's to get a spark plug wrench with a long extension and get in there and take that out. Um, I'm going to open up my other plugs and uh, that way I can match my socket to this plug. It should be the same. They're really weird looking plug. I've had a lot of dirt bikes over the years and snow machines and I've never seen a motor take such a small thread for a plug. That's like a, oh, I don't even know what thread size that is. M10, I guess. Yeah, it's, it's pretty tiny. So let's go find, that should be it right here. It is and an extension. Sorry guys, I'm uh, trying to do this and show it to you, but uh, I kind of need both hands here at some point. Put our plug down here. Now these plugs here, like I said, they have kind of a weird tip on them. So uh, I take it there's no gapping them. Not like a regular spark plug. If I'm wrong, then fuck, I should have gapped the plug. But I doubt it. Make sure it's set on reverse. And here we go. Uh, fits. That's it. Well, that wasn't terribly tight at all. Not that it needs to be, but. All right, that plug is a. Uh... It's not horrible looking. What I'm looking for to see how dark it is, how white it is, how gold it is, it's a uh, kind of have a gray to it. A little bit of gold on the actual uh, um, ceramic part on it. I'm gonna edit that sneeze out. <laughs> dusty. It's a dusty plug. So I'm gonna keep these in order as well. Why? Just because. Just because I want to see which. Uh, which cylinder did what compared to which other ones? Wow, these are really not tight. I don't think I've ever put a spark plug that loose in anything. They are tight, like they're, they were not loose, loose. There's, there's a little snap to get them off, but not much. And that one looks pretty much the same. Got like a a black with a white smoke over it. Almost makes it look a little gray. Super clean in there, like it should be. This really doesn't get wet, so other than uh, washing it when I had the, uh, the hull off. Still in great shape. This thing's uh, oh, pretty much two years old now. And uh, everything looks nice and shiny in here. Fresh water. Like I said, it stays pretty dry. There's no reason for this to really get wet. And there's the last plug. Again, it looks pretty much the same. I'm at uh, 92 hours right now. Um, do you need to change your plugs? Yeah, probably not. You could probably get away for uh, without changing plugs for for quite some time. But um, yeah, you could probably get away without changing your plugs for a long, long time. But like I said, I'm going on a trip. I want it to run good. Um, I was idling the other day and it kind of missed a little bit. So I, I just want to make sure that everything's all right. Um, these caps seem pretty tight on the end of them. And like I said, the uh, the stock cap, the stock plug does have the cap on it, which I read uh, that I was supposed to take the cap off. Now I'm not sure if that was a Sea-Doo Spark or an RXP or whatever the hell it was. But um, so what I'm gonna do with this? Pop that back in there. 
And I'm gently going to put this in there. You can't really go wrong. It, uh, it's almost a tight fit for the, uh, for the socket. And I'm going to thread that in with my fingers. If you're not getting this thing threading in like this, do not put a wrench on it because uh, like it, should, it should go all the way in flush. You don't want to cross thread this. Like I said, I think it'd be pretty hard to do that. All right, so let's see. It's pretty much stopped right there, and I'm going to give it a little torque. That's it. It's a lot more than they did, but uh, it won't hurt anything. I believe uh, back in the days when I used to have dirt bikes, they used to say, go too tight and do an eighth of a turn. So that's, uh, that's pretty much what we did there. I don't know if that applies with these plugs. I don't know if it says anything about that. Nope. It just says high performance. It's high performance crap. You guys are looking for the part number on this. These are E3s. They're E3.38. And that is supposed to be the equivalent to what's supposed to go in there. Which I believe is a C8. Oh, EB or something like that. C8 EB. CR8 EB. E is an echo, a B is an Bob. So let's do the rest. Pop these suckers in there. Start threading them in. So she's tight. Do a little twist. I'm gonna make sure this seal, I'm gonna show you that. This seal here, when you slide the wrench out, wants to pop out. So you gotta make sure it's well seated. All the way around. Should look good, should be in there. Let's say they kind of pop out really easy. Put you back in your little holder here. And here we go. So yeah, we're going um, tomorrow, actually we're leaving. We're spending the night in Port Severn, which is on the Trent Severn Way in Ontario. Beautiful, beautiful waterway, it goes all the way to Kingston. If you go all the way to Kingston, I think you do something like 48 locks and um, you do the marine rail, which we will be doing tomorrow. It's a big wooden platform that takes you over a piece of land. And um, we're gonna cross a swing bridge, nothing too fancy there, but a, a little miniature swing bridge. We're gonna have, I think, four locks before we get to Aurelia, if I'm not mistaken. And if you were to continue to go to Peterborough, you go into something like a, it's called a lift lock. That thing is just amazing. It's basically two bathtubs of water hanging off a cliff that go up and down like this. It's, uh, it's a marvel of engineering there because uh, this wasn't built lately. This was built, I don't know when, probably 1930 or a long, long time ago anyways. So uh, hats off to whoever designed that because holy fuck, that's impressive fucking shit. All right, so here we go. Um, I'm gonna go take a peek for some dielectric beasts. I'll be here right back. Well, what do you know? I have some dielectric greaser right here. This stuff is uh, just says dielectric grease. It's a uh, what you would use on a on a spark plug cap. Now I'm not gonna put this down in the hole around the spark plug. What this, the purpose of this here is just to add a little uh, barrier so, uh, so it seals a little bit better. Just like a little water barrier. If you have a dirt bike and you're going mud bogging or quad and you have a spark plug cap with a rubber on it, you definitely wanna put a little bit of dielectric grease. You don't have to go too, too crazy with this. The stock wouldn't even have any, so it's, it's not a big deal. We'll get rid of that. And we're just gonna take our time. It's actually, <laughs> it's, it's air locking right now. So you know you got a good seal going in. <laughs> there it goes. Just farted, just released. I don't like doing this with, uh, with just one hand. Okay, I'm taking a look around, make sure the seal didn't move, nothing happened, it looks really good. 
Give that a little twerk. Snap it in. All right, let's do that again. A little bit of dielectric grease here. Gush that in there with my fingers. And the one that was in there back in there. Let's get rid of our plug. Sure that connection's good. It's snapped in there. Now I am actually gonna put you. Uh, I'm gonna try to hold you again awkwardly here, because I do want to push down on this before I tighten the bolt. That's it. Doesn't have to be super tight. It's not going anywhere. Those little impact drills actually put quite a bit of torque. When you're putting, uh, when you're taking screws or rusty old screws or out or in, you can actually snap the heads right off them. They're pretty amazing. For those of you that haven't used a, uh, an impact drill, that is definitely something you want to invest in. They're amazing, amazing, amazing tools. It's not the same as using a drill. They, uh, they don't strip screw heads just as easy. And they put in a crazy amount of torque without stripping the screw head they kind of do like a back and forth motion so they don't work their way out they just keep working their way out and in out and in all right Ugh, that little snapping sound it's fucking awesome it's fucking awesome Ooh, yeah. all right again i want to use two hands for this huh. that's it my friends there we go Three brand new spark plugs. That's how it's done. That's how it's done. One thing I didn't do that bothers me right now is I didn't compare the lengths of these two. They seem visually the same, but uh, kind of wish I would have checked that. Something I normally do, but I got distracted by you guys. So I didn't do that, but I'm pretty sure they're good. Red size is good and they look good. They don't make them uh, like a millimeter longer or two millimeters longer. They're usually when there's a difference, there's quite a bit of difference in my uh, great experience. Now, um, I'm not going to go through the whole long, boring story of putting this back together right now. You guys have already seen that. Same thing as taking it off. Um, my next video, though, I got another little gift for you guys. This is a plastic wear ring. And... Um, it's the OEM wear ring, it's not a stainless steel one or a fancy performance one. And I'm gonna swap that out. So I'm gonna do another video of that. Um, and on that note, Direct705, peace!